I thought it might be a good idea to give you an example of working with Rayleigh criteria. Um, this example I haven't seen on an exam before, but I've seen examples that are very similar to it in that we're asking, you know, um, yeah, what would be the resolution? Or sometimes the question would be, how far away are you? So something very similar in, uh, in uh, mechanics to what we're going to do now, although I think it's a more interesting example. Keep in mind, in order to work with Rayleigh criteria examples, you do need to know a little trick. And um, it really helps to know this little equation. So it goes like this. If you're in radians only, L equals R theta. That's if you have some sort of distance like this right here. So if um, you're taking a look at some sort of angle here, in math we call this actually an arc length. This would be, for example, um, you know, if you're going out in a circle right here, so this is your angle in radians. It's really important, angles in radians. If R is your radius of your circle, and L then will be the arc length. And it turns out this trick right here, you need to know this or use this in order to solve Rayleigh criteria examples usually. So I think this one is of key importance. Um, so let's look at how to use this equation and the Rayleigh criteria to solve a practical question. Uh, now I used to be in the military and I've always been uh, interested in um, uh, reconnaissance satellites. So I took a look and uh, tried to estimate a few things from, um, you know, some people call them spy satellites. But uh, so I tried to look up a few facts and then uh, it's fun to just do a calculation. So um, a reconnaissance satellite is orbiting at an altitude of 250 uh, kilometers in a circular orbit. The real spy satellites don't actually have a circular orbit. They're actually a little bit different. But um, for example, the KH-11 satellites, which are uh, an older version, but they've got newer ones of it that have been launched you know, in 2005 and even this uh, past year, 2011. Um, those ones have orbits in excess of 250, so there's 250 or higher. But um, those types of satellites, um, they have a telescope, uh, and it's a circular telescope, and it's got a diameter of, now I assumed 2.4 meters, although it's been uh, thought that maybe they're a little bit bigger, maybe up to 3 meters, but there are some practical issues. You can't really send up a satellite if its telescope is, uh, in other words, the mirror of it, is larger than the width of what you can actually send up to space. So you are sort of limited, so around 2.4 or 3 meters seems reasonable. And the question is then, what's the minimum resolution it can image at optical wavelengths? So I just picked something that we can see. The human eye can see between, you know, 400-ish nanometers and up to about 700 or so nanometers. So 550 is somewhere in the middle. This is a nice optical range. So just take a look at, you know, could, what could we see on the ground from space if we're that altitude? So this might seem like a totally crazy example. I think it's really interesting, but that's maybe me and I'm biased. But um, let's take a look at what the Rayleigh criteria is. So first of all, we know that uh, two objects are just resolved. Remember, we looked at this just earlier. Just resolved if the angle is equal to 1.22 lambda over b. So then we just put in the numbers. So we have 1.22 times the wavelength, which is 550. Now you have to remember, a nanometer is times 10 to the minus 9. So I'm going to say that there. Meters. Divide that by, I need to have my size of the aperture. So in this case, that's going to be my telescope width. Uh, so it's going to be 2.4 meters. And these two numbers are here will cancel out, which is good, because radians are uh, sort of a unitless unit. Um, so if we look at this, then I can actually calculate my angle here. So I'll say theta equals, I'm just going to use my trusty calculator. And I don't need to worry about if I'm in radian or degree mode, because I'm not dealing with angles, like I'm not doing sine or cosine or anything. So I'm going to do 550e minus 9, and I do times 1.22. I like to do things in the most complicated looking thing first. So I did this times this, enter, and then I divide that by 2.4. And I get an angle of roughly 2.8 times 10 to the minus 7 radians. So that tells me what I can just resolve. 
If you remember from Rayleigh criteria, what it means is this or anything smaller than that, I can't tell apart. But this or anything bigger than that, I can tell apart. So the idea here, what's actually happening is I've got um, you know, the ground over here. Let's say that's the ground. And I've got my uh, satellite, so it's maybe it's got a circular telescope piece, and it's probably got little um, solar panels. Now, actually, the Hubble Space Telescope is extremely similar to some of these spy satellites. I wonder why. So um, this one right here, not that the Hubble Space Telescope is looking down, but it's easy, right? If you're a country like the U.S. and you want to make telescopes, why not use the same technology you've been using for spy satellites, but then just use it to point out? And of course, the Hubble Space Telescope has some really cool extra stuff in it. But basically, this thing is looking down. And what we're trying to tell then is this. So we're trying to tell here, you know, what that angle is. And if we know that, then we can also tell then this length, and this is what we would call r. Remember I showed you that we were looking with this thing right here, this equation that's really nice to know. So we just found theta in radians. That's great. Because do we know the height, or in this case, the radius of the circle? Yep. We know it's, uh, what is it? 250 kilometers. So I can say then that L equals R theta. In this case, I want L. That's my resolution I'm looking for. I want to know this distance apart. See, so what really happens is we just figure out what this angle is. But an angle projects over distance, right? I mean, if I take a really small angle, but I go, you know, a uh, thousand meters away, that's going to make a very big distance between two things. Whereas if I take that angle, a really small angle, let's say, uh, yeah, a fraction of a degree, and I'm only a millimeter away, it's going to be a tiny, tiny, tiny little distance. So what this L is, it tells you sort of how that angle projects. So that's, that's why we need this. So in this case, I want to find L. I know r, r is going to be my distance, in this case right here, 250 kilometers, so that's going to be times 10 to the 3 meters. Or you could just say 250,000, right? That's the same. So I'm going to say it's 250,000 meters. Remember, I have to use proper units, so this is in meters, um, times an angle of 2.8 times 10 to the minus 7 radians. This only works for radians. So I'm going to take my answer from before, multiply that by 250,000, and I get an answer of L is roughly, well, it's actually 0 0.06989, stuff like that. So I can only use two decimals in order to write my answer. So, well, I can say this. I can say 0 0.07 um, meters. In other words, that's seven centimeters. So this telescope at this distance, at that wavelength, um, which seems reasonable, can only image things, in other words, it can only tell apart two things that are seven centimeters away. In fact, it's worse than that. This is what we call the diffraction limit. In other words, this is as good as you could get in theory, but there's some practical issues. Number one, there's the atmosphere, and guess what it's doing? It's taking the light and messing it all up. That's the whole reason why they put the Hubble Space Telescope in space. You know, the telescope that we have, well, we, humankind, has that points up and takes really good pictures of stars and stuff. The reason why they bothered to do that, because, I mean, first of all, it's really expensive to send something into space. And actually, on the ground, we have bigger telescopes than the Hubble Space Telescope. On the ground, uh, for example, in uh, Chile, um, there's telescopes that have a diameter of more than eight meters wide. You think, well, those should be way better. Not always. Because, see, the atmosphere on Earth, it screws up the light. When I mean screws it up, I mean it, it makes it, um, how's this, the atmosphere is moving around randomly. So it distorts the light, which means your resolution, this is at best it's going to be quite a bit worse depending on what the atmosphere is doing. Now, it's cool. They actually have uh, new systems now called adaptive optics where they can, they can kind of fix some of what the atmosphere is doing. And that's a really neat thing. They actually take stuff and they use deformable mirrors. It's really neat. But this is, this is as good as this satellite could do. It would only get worse in real life because of the atmosphere. 
And I thought just quickly, I'm not going to do it here on the board, but I thought, um, okay, um, what size of telescope would you need in order to tell someone's fingerprints from space? Um, so I assumed that the distance between the fingerprints was about half of a millimeter, so 0.5 millimeters. I made that L. And here then I worked backwards to try to solve for B. I don't know if that makes any sense, but there I sort of worked backwards. I started with an L value of 0.5 millimeters. In other words, 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Started with that. And I worked out what B has to be to make it work. It turns out if you do the calculation yourself, you get something like uh, 330 meters. I think I got 335 when I did the calculation earlier this morning. I did that over breakfast, so nerdy me, but uh, I thought it was fun. So uh, you need a, a telescope of a diameter of about 335 meters. In other words, one third of a kilometer in order to really be able to optically take people's fingerprints from space. Now there are some neat tricks that they can do um, in order to make it a little bit better, but this is at least looking at Rayleigh criteria and diffraction. That's a nice example of it. You could also be looking at a car telling apart the uh, distance, uh, sorry, telling apart um, the headlights on a car. Uh, if, you know, if you're, if you're somewhere watching it, you could see what distance does it have to be to tell them apart. Lots of examples possible. I just thought this was an interesting one.